Hutch Cargo and his pal Spinner and Paddlefoot in another exciting adventure, The Desert Queen. Hutch and company off on another adventure have booked passage on an old-fashioned riverboat and are headed downstream on a secret mission. Looks like a lazy day for Clutch, Spinner, and Paddlefoot. Golly, Clutch, I bet I'm the luckiest kid in the world taking all these trips with you. You're a big help, too, Spinner. Remember, though, no one must know that the purpose of our trip is to find the Desert Queen. About three weeks ago, a 29-pound ruby, the biggest and most perfect ruby in the world, was stolen from the King's National Museum of Monrovia. 29 pounds? Why, that weighs as much as Paddlefoot. Rumor has it the Desert Queen, who once lived in the palace at Monrovia, feels that the ruby is rightfully hers. And they say she sent an agent from her desert hideaway to Monrovia to return the ruby to her. So, Spinner, don't speak to strangers. This boat may be loaded with spies. Don't worry, Kutch. I'll be careful. And just at this moment, farther along the ship's deck lurks a strange figure, very interested in Clutch and company. Say, I didn't finish packing those suitcases, Spinner. I better do it now. Okay, I think I'll stay here. The sun feels good. Well, well, young man, did you drop this? No, I didn't, sir. You are the only passenger on board of Boy Scout age. You must have dropped this Boy Scout knife. I do belong to the Scouts, but I don't have my knife yet. Well, my boy, you do now. That's your knife. But, but Clutch said not to... Talk to strangers? <laughs> Always an excellent idea, Sonny. <laughs> Never talk to strangers. But, mister, you're a... a stranger? <laughs> not anymore. We're friends. I gave you the knife, remember? Well... I'm the Maharaja of Sphinxville. <laughs> All my friends call me Big Ma. What's your name? Finner, and this is Paddlefoot. <sniffs> oh, how delightful. <laughs> Mr. Maharaja, what's in that basket? Is that your lunch? <laughs> no, Spinner. This basket contains a delightful gift for my little grandson. A cobra. <laughs> a deadly cobra. They make wonderful pets when they're tamed. Well, Spinner, let me say I'm extremely happy to have met you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Maharaja. Maybe I'll see you again. Maybe, Spinner, maybe. But I doubt it. Too bad. <laughs> you didn't like him, did you, boy? I guess I shouldn't have talked to him. I better tell Clutch. What's that, Spinner? A man, Clutch. The Maharaja's fix, Bill. He gave me this knife, said his friends called him Big Ma. He was so nice, Clutch. And he had a cobra in the basket for his grandson. Spinner, I asked you not to talk to strangers. Golly, I'm sorry, Clutch. We've got to be careful. While we were on deck, someone searched our luggage. Lucky I've got the map in my pocket. There, that message will warn them about Clutch Cargo. <coughs> Away to Sphinxville, you beautiful bird. <coughs> Only another day and night's travel, and we'll be there. Right, Clutch, it won't be long now. <coughs> Look out, Spinner! <coughs> They can't hear us. My, what a pity. We've lost those two nice people, and that water is filled with whirlpools. Probably crocodiles, too. And yesterday, I saw a stingray. I must notify the captain. Someday. Can Clutch and company survive those dangerous swirling waters? Be sure to tune in for the next exciting episode with Clutch Cargo. Cargo and his pals, Spinner and Paddlefoot, in another exciting adventure, The Desert Queen. You remember last time, Clutch and company were traveling by riverboat to the Desert Queen's palace to bring back a 29-pound ruby stolen from the Monrovia National Museum. Clutch, Spinner, and Paddlefoot were leaning on the boat rail when suddenly it gave way. Help! Help! Go back! Wait for us! They can't hear us! Hold on, Spinner boy. I'm coming. What the? It's got me, too. It, is it a whirlpool? No, it's a net. We're being pulled toward shore. I wonder who's on the other end of this net. 
In a moment, we'll know. Holt! Who are you? How'd you get into my net? Take it easy with that gun, mister. Name is Cargo. Clutch Cargo. Clutch Cargo, the famous adventurer author? Don't know how famous, but I'm the one. Clutch Cargo, why, I read your last book. My name's Twaddle, Colonel Lucifer Twaddle. Colonel Twaddle, the foremost authority on prehistoric bones? The same. Well, I read your last book, Colonel Twaddle. Very interesting. Well, that makes it a mutual admiration society. Oh, oh. Paddlefoot liked the part about dinosaur bones. I see. What brings you here? And so, Colonel Twaddle, the ship's rail broke, we fell overboard, and here we are. However, I managed to save this map. It'll show us the overland route to the Desert Queen's stronghold. We're at this point now. First stop, Pharaoh Oasis. Then a short journey by camel to the Desert Queen's palace. Do you prefer your camel with one hump or two? With this gang, we'll need a two-humper. Oh, that's good. I just happen to have one in the bushes. This is my camel, Sir Duffy. Gee, Paddlefoot, a real camel. And we get to ride him. All ready. Clutch, you ride the front hump. Spinner the back hump. Paddlefoot behind Spinner. And I'll ride the middle. <laughs> Golly, Clutch, this is like riding on a small-sized roller coaster. Right, Spinner. Just be sure to hang on. I don't know why it is. I always end up with the cheap seats. I'm extremely happy I could join you, Clutch. Perhaps I'll discover some giant brontosaurus bone. Anything is possible where we're going, Colonel. Just be on the lookout for Big Ma. He's dangerous. For miles through hot desert sands they trudge. Tired and thirsty, Clutch and company with Colonel Twaddle arrive upon a welcome scene. Look, Clutch! An aosis! That's an oasis, Spinner. Anyway, it means water. Don't drink too fast now. Cold water isn't good for you when you're too hot. We'll fill the canteens and be off. Touch, Colonel Twaddle, look! There goes the Maharaja of Sinkville. He's riding a one-humper. No time to lose. Come on, let's go. He's headed for Sphinxville, too. I hope we can keep Big Ma in sight. I doubt if we can. He's pulling away. Go, Duffy, go! Looks like we've lost him, Clutch. He's gone. Good heavens, Clutch. Look ahead. Sandstorm. Worst thing that could happen. Right in our path, too. I'm traveling this way fast. Cover your noses and mouth. Will Clutch Cargo and company be buried beneath the desert sand? Be sure to tune in for the next exciting episode with Clutch Cargo. Clutch Cargo and his pals, Spinner and Paddlefoot, in another exciting adventure, The Desert Queen. You remember last time, Clutch and company were on their way to the Desert Queen's palace. Traveling on the desert with Colonel Twaddle's camel, they had just seen Big Ma disappear over a sand dune. Then, without warning... Don't give up, men. <laughs> As old Swampy would say, where there's a will, there are several ways. What's that? that sounds like motors. Stay right there, all of you. I'm going to take a little trip. Little by little, Clutch inches his way through the storm, digging, clawing, pulling his body. The sound of motors getting louder. Well, it was a sandstorm, all right, but a whirlwind machine. A well-thought-out plan to do away with all this. But only a Ben Big Ma. Spinner, Colonel Twaddle, you can get up now. It's over. Everybody okay? Fine, Clutch. Oh. Now that we're underway again, it won't be long before we see the Desert Queen's palace. Let's hope there'll be no more mishaps. I have a feeling we haven't seen the last of Big Ma. We're here, Sphinxville and the palace of the Desert Queen. How do we get in, Clutch? Read that sign. It says, to open gate, sound your musical A. Musical A? Yes, you know, Spinner. Sing the scale. You mean, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. Well, 
that didn't work. Let's all try it. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti. Good boy, Paddlefoot. You've opened the gate. Come on. By Jove, what a delightful place. Sure looks quiet. But we don't know yet if it's friendly. Clutch, look! Get him, Punchy. Oh, this guy means business. Open the gate, Paddlefoot! Howl! Howl! Try hard, Paddlefoot! Oh, oh! He, he can't! He's too scared! Only one chance! Trip him! <laughs> oh. Run for it, Spinner! Run! <laughs> Too close for comfort. Hey, where's Colonel Twaddle? They got him, Clutch. He didn't get out. Then we've got to get in. We can't use the gate, so we'll use the wall. But how, Clutch? It's too high. Not when you've got Duffy. Come on, boy. Ever see a camel ladder spinner? Not till now. Feet up on this ledge. There. Hold on. We're going over the top. <clears throat> Quiet now and stick together. Gotta have a little talk with the Desert Queen. Slowly they move until they find a stairway leading to a door. Easy, Spinner. Once inside this door, and we're in the palace. Clutch, look! Mummies! You're right, Spinner. A mummy tomb. Uh oh, locked in. I wonder what we've gotten ourselves into this time. Mummies are thousands of years old. Wow. Locked in a tomb of mummies with one still alive. Will they get out? Be sure to tune in for the next exciting episode with Clutch Cargo. Clutch Cargo and his pal Spinner and Paddlefoot. In another exciting adventure, the Desert Queen. You remember last time, Clutch and company luckily escaped the razor-sharp knife of Pungy. Clutch, Spinner, and Paddlefoot went back inside in search of Twaddle. Golly, Clutch, Paddlefoot's attacking the mummy. No, Paddlefoot, don't. There may be a curse on that mummy. He's unwinding the bandage, Clutch. Him. It's too late, Spinner. The damage is done. And look, it's Colonel Twaddle. Is, is he all right, Clutch? He's alive, but that was a close one. Just a few more minutes and he'd have been a real mummy. I bet we can thank Big Ma for this. Thank Paddlefoot. He's the real hero. <laughs> well, where am I? What happened? You're going to be all right, Colonel Twaddle. That was a tight one. I'll say, just like my first tuxedo. Stay with him, Spinner. I want to look around. We've got to find a way out. Sometimes these walls have secret doors. No, no luck. I feel much better, Clutch. Raring to go. I'll teach them to twiddle with twaddle. Good, Colonel. Together, maybe we can find a way out. Right behind Clutch and his friends, an ancient sarcophagus slowly opens. Oh, no. Not another live one. She sure looks alive to me. I can't believe it. Must be my Uncle Water Fever coming back. That's not Fever, Twaddle. She's real. Shh. She's going to speak. I welcome you to my palace, gentlemen. I am the Desert Queen. Thank you for all of us, Your Highness. May I ask who you are? This gentleman is Colonel Lucifer Twaddle, prehistoric bone specialist. And this is Spinner, my young pal, and his dog, Paddlefoot. My name is Clutch Cargo. I am highly honored, sir. I have read your adventure book. Who sent you here? The King of Monrovia sent us to find you to plead with you to return the priceless 29-pound ruby to the National Museum. Sir, I do not have the ruby, nor have I seen it since I left it in the museum. Well, the ruby has disappeared, and as the story goes, you are supposed to send someone to steal it. This is terrible. I have always believed the ruby should remain in the Monrovia Museum. Who could have taken it? Clutch! Do you think Big Mom... Just a moment, Spinner. 
Do you know the Maharaja of Sphinxville, Your Highness? Very well. He is one of my most trusted subjects. Maybe so, but nevertheless a very dangerous man. Futch tells the Queen about their trip and their narrow escapes and how they always saw Big Ma running from the scene. We must be careful. If what you say is true, the Maharaja may be planning to seize my throne. Ears have heard every word that was said, for just inside the mummy case door, a huge figure lurks. Please be quiet. These tunnels echo. Stay together, everyone. Right, Clutch. Strange man, the Maharaja, always carrying that big basket. I've never asked him, but I think that is his briefcase. Well, he told Spinner it was a gift for his grandson. Said it was a cobra. Right, Spinner? Spinner? They're gone. Disappeared in thin air. Colonel Twaddle. But well, they couldn't have gone far. Well, there's another door right... <gasps> Spinner and Twaddle gone. The queen kidnapped. And Clutch knocked out cold. Is this the end? Be sure to tune in for the next exciting episode with Clutch Cargo. Clutch Cargo and his pals, Spinner and Paddlefoot, in another exciting adventure, The Desert Queen. You remember last time, Clutch and company with Colonel Twaddle had met the Desert Queen, who, as Clutch and his friends with the Queen started through a secret tunnel, Spinner, Twaddle, and Paddlefoot disappeared. Turning back... Sorry you two won't be able to enjoy our little game as much as we will. <laughs> you have a very dark future, Your Highness. <laughs> Keep your eyes on that wall, Mr. Cargo. In a moment, your little playmate will enter. <laughs> Pretty ferocious looking. Now, if I can hypnotize him by staring him down like Swampy told me, then he'll be friendly, I hope. Steady, boy. Steady. Easy does it. Careful. Easy. It worked. Phew. Now, come on, boy. Come on. Nice, kitty. Easy, easy. Steady. Good, kitty. Steady. Now to stand on his back. There, now if I can just straighten up, I... Get these ropes over this pole. A little more and... Got it. Now to open that mummy case. Hope Her Highness is okay. Are you all right, Your Highness? Perfectly, Mr. Cargo. But so hurt to think my most trusted subject, the Maharaja, would try to do away with me. Like he's probably trying to do with Spinner, Twaddle, and Paddlefoot. Follow me, Mr. Cargo. We'll use my secret tunnel. I'm sure we will find them headed for the open-air arena. The Desert Queen pulls the bottom bill of an ancient bird statue. Suddenly, a portion of the wall opens, revealing a tunnel. Come quickly, Mr. Cargo. There's no time to lose. Uh oh We're near the end of this tunnel, and I hear voices. That's the march to the slave market. Look, there's Spinner and Twaddle and Paddlefoot. I've got to stop them. Not that mob, Mr. Cargo. Wait. We'll find a way. No time to lose. Is there another way to reach them? Through that door. What are you intending to do with them, Big Ma? Sell them as slaves worth their weight in gold. Made it! What luck! That rope is tied to that beam across the arena. Take that! And now for a sky ride, Big Ma. Help! Let me down. I can't stand heights. <laughs> Here's a three-point skid landing. Yeah. I give up. I give up. <laughs> the ruby. He had it all the time in that basket. And he told me it was a cobra. He was the only cobra spinner. What's that old saying about one bad apple spoils the bunch? He won't harm anyone else, Mr. Carker. My faithful subjects will see to that. Please return this ruby to its rightful place. The National Museum in Monrovia. That will be our pleasure, Your Highness. Clutch, clutch, look. When Big Ma dug that trench in the ground, he uncovered the world's greatest brontosaurus femur bone. Just what I've always wanted. Hooray! Now Twaddle won't have to fiddle with the shovel. 
please come back again sometime. Our gate will always be open. Thank you, Your Highness. And for you, little man, a kiss. <sighs> and so ends the story of Clutch Cargo and the Desert Queen. Be sure to tune in for the next exciting adventure with Clutch Cargo and his pal Spinner and Paddlefoot. Up one of the hills which ring the teeming metropolis of Gotham City, a large house rears its bulk against the dark sky. Outwardly, there's nothing to distinguish this house from many others. But deep in the cavernous basements of this house, in a chamber hewn from the living rock of the mountain, is the strange, dimly lighted, mysteriously secret Bat's Cave, hidden headquarters of America's number one crime fighter, Batman. Yes, Batman clad in the somber costume which has struck terror to the heart of many a swaggering denizen of the underworld. Batman, who even now is pondering the plans of a new assault against the forces of crime. A crushing blow against evil in which he will have the valuable aid of his young, two-fisted assistant, Robin the Boy Wonder. They represent American youth who love their country and are glad to fight for it. Wherever crime raises its ugly head to strike with the venom of a maddened rattlesnake, Batman and Robin strike also. And in this very hour when the Axis criminals are spreading their evil over the world, even within our own land, Batman and Robin stand ready to fight them to the death. These boxes are usually locked. I know it. Captain Arnold, please. Captain Arnold speaking. I have a nice little package for you. You'll find it at the corner of First and Maple. Heavenly. Yeah, what's doing, Captain? It's the Batman again. He's at the corner of First and Maple. And this time, I'm going with you. Calling car 67. 67. That's us. Go to First and Maple. A-702. I'm warning you, Dr. Decker will make you regret this. Shut up! Dr. Decker? Who's that? Never mind, you'll find out. Let's wait around and see Captain Arnold's face when he gets here. No time for that, don't forget, I've got a date. Let's go. You'll recognize these as the last two men of the Collins gang. I know you've been looking for them for some time. The Batman. P.S. The keys to the handcuffs are in this one's pocket. Well, it looks as though the Batman has done you boys another favor. Yeah. You ought to put him on a force. You'll find him. I'll put him on. Up. I won't be a minute. Oh, no, Harry, I'll just relax a moment. It may settle my nerves. Listen, will you keep your hands out of there? You've had your usual busy day, I suppose. Yep. Up at the crack of noon, a brisk walk to the corner, and then the club for a rugged afternoon of gin rummy. 
Maybe you'll be too tired to go with me tomorrow to meet Uncle Martin. No, no, I'll be right with you. Thanks. Oh, it'll mean so much to him to know that he still has his friends despite all that trouble he was in. Only do me a favor. Let's not start too early. I'm always tired in the morning. All right. You're liable to carry that masquerade too far. Think so? Yes, I do. Why don't you let her know who you really are instead of letting her think you're just a good for nothing playboy? Well, if she knew I was the Batman, she might worry. Not that she cares anything about me. Besides, on account of our special assignment from Uncle Sam, our success depends on keeping our identity a secret. And suppose she asks you about your status in the Army? Well, I always tell her I'm a 4F. That was fast. Well, I don't keep people waiting like someone I know. Read all about it. Read all about the Batman. Captures Colin Gang. Extra, extra. Hey, boy, paper. Oh. Extra, The Batman extra. is certainly marvelous, isn't he? Oh, I think he's a show-off. Oh, everybody that does anything is a show-off to you. I can do things, too. I'll show you. I'll call for you tomorrow and take you to meet your uncle no matter how early you want to leave, even if it's before noon. It's nice of you to make such a terrific sacrifice on my account. That looks like Warren. Yeah, that's him. My old cellmate. Hi, Marty, old boy. Why, hello, Foster. I, I don't... Uh, I know. You didn't think your old pal would remember you, did you? Well, I'm expecting my niece to pick me your up. Your niece? Oh, sure, I know. That's what we came to tell you. She couldn't make it. We're going to take you to her. Come on. in that car. You're seeing things, Marty. Stop the car! Pipe down, Marty. You're going with us. Now sit back and relax. Why? Why, what do you want from me? You'll find out soon enough. Has uh, Mr. Warren left already? Yes, ma'am. Two men met him and they drove off in a black sedan. Uh, thank you. He drove away with some men in that black sedan we passed back on the road. Well, get in. We'll catch him before he gets back to town. Get going, Alfred. Then he got chopped. I can't understand why Uncle Martin didn't wait for us. Hey, that car with a demon is right back of us. Step on it. See if they're tailing us. They're speeding up, sir. Drive a little faster, Alfred. They're trying to lose us. I have a strange feeling that Uncle Martin is in some kind of trouble. They're gaining on us. Can't you get any more speed out of this jalopy? Do you think we can catch them? Sure, but I hope we catch them before some speed cop catches us. They're out of sight. Release the gas and make the change. I think I'm going to turn around. Here they come. Get down. They passed it. Didn't give us a tumble. Well, let them try to figure that one out. They've disappeared, sir. No side roads. They just seem to have vanished. Well, Linda, I guess your uncle wasn't interested in seeing us. I can't understand his actions. Well, I guess the only thing to do is to go back to the hospital and wait for him to phone me. Yeah, and find out how he did that disappearing act. I'd like to pull it sometime when my creditors are after me. This was part of a foreign land transplanted bodily to America and known as Little Tokyo. Since a wise government rounded up the shifty-eyed Japs, it has become virtually a ghost street 
where only one business survives, eking out a precarious existence on the dimes of curiosity seekers. Now, this exhibit, my friend, was created by artists that know. Artists who have created some of the finest wax exhibits in all of England and France. Now, the price of admission is only 10 cents, uh, plus one cent tax per Uncle Sam. We're not going to have any trouble with you, Marty, are we? Now you're being smart. It's educational. All right, gentlemen, right up these steps. And if when you come out, you don't face the greatest exhibit you ever saw, I'll refund your money. All right, folks, who's next? Just a minute, folks. I know you two want to ride low. Come in, Mr. Warren. The League of the New Order extends a cordial welcome to an honored guest. The League of the New Order? Yes, a group of men, all of them dishonored like yourself. But I'm not a criminal. I was convicted, yes, and sent to prison. But if the truth were known... The fact remains that you have been dishonored, exactly like our friend Mr. Fletcher here. An excellent architect, brilliant engineer, except that some of his buildings did not quite come up to specifications. Uh, may I also present Mr. Marshall, Preston, and Wallace. Now, they are... What do you want of me? I am Dr. Daka, humble servant of His Majesty Hirohito, heavenly ruler and prince of the rising sun. By divine destiny, my country shall destroy the democratic forces of evil in the United States to make way for the new order. An order that will bring about the liberation of the enslaved people of America. Each of these men, dishonored by your corrupt form of government, is a specialist in his line and have been especially selected by me to execute the orders I received from Tokyo. We need an industrialist to round out our circle. That is why I've selected you. If you cooperate with us willingly, you shall share in the glorious victory soon to be ours. And if I refuse? You have no choice but to accept. You will work with us or be compelled to work for us. Therefore, it should be very plain to you that you should be willing to help serve my glorious emperor. Listen, Daka, or whatever your name is, I owe my allegiance to no country or order but my own. I'm an American first and always, and no amount of torture conceived by your twisted oriented brain will make me change my mind. Ah, but you are laboring under a great misapprehension. I do not believe in anything so barbaric as torture. Well... Bob! Your former partner. He was our first choice for the position you are about to assume. Unfortunately, he too attempted to resist the inevitable. Bob, old man! Don't you know me? What have you done to him? Deprived him of his ability to think. I have converted him into a zombie. He can only act as I direct. You will notice the metal headpiece from which a wire leads to the spine. Now, Mr. Warren, I would like you to look at this special microphone, the only means of communication with a zombie. When I speak into it, this slave gets the impulses through the headpiece and obeys my wishes. By this means, I have him carry out my orders, no matter how far he is from me. 
Interesting, isn't it? Wells, return to your station. Now, what is your answer? It's still the same. Marshal Foster, take him to my electronic laboratory. Patton Jones, the door. to destroy your brain at this time because you have information which I must have while you still have your memory. I'll tell you nothing. Fletcher. Fletcher. Serum. Have you ever heard of the truth serum, Mr. Warren? It's one of the New Order's favorite weapons. Hold him. Mr. Warren, you are one of the men who endowed the Gotham City Foundation. Therefore, you should be able to give me the information which I need. City Foundation. Several grams. Where do they keep it? In the safe behind the picture in Dr. Borden's dispensary. Do you know the combination? No, I do not. Preston, lock him up. Fortunately, I do not have to have the combination. But how are we going to crack? What do you want that radium for? I will show you. Captain Jones, the block. Gentlemen, this is the new war, the secret weapon. Marshal, give me a capsule. This weapon employs an infinitesimal amount of radium. It is a small yet deadly forerunner of the atom smasher, which, when perfected, will smash anything that lies in our way to victory. Now, I'm to demonstrate its destructive effects. Break it and return to your station. I would step over this way, gentlemen, if I were you. Foster, I want you particularly to see this. There are several adjustments for power on this weapon. However, the weakest will suffice for this operation. Preston, step back and observe. Now watch what happens to that solid block of cement. <laughs> This block was originally concrete. What? Yes. Now you understand why I must have more radium. Why, sure. With more radium, we can build a weapon bigger than that gun. Exactly. We can build a lethal mechanism so destructive as to make retaliation by the United Nations impossible. However, this weapon will suffice to open the safe at the Gotham City Foundation. And I am giving you that assignment. We've been back over an hour and he hasn't called yet. Oh, don't worry about your uncle. I'm sure he'll call you sometime today and explain why he didn't wait for us. Maybe he's in concert or something. If you had gotten up a little bit earlier this morning, we would have been there in time to meet him. From now on, I'm turning over a new leaf. I'm going to be very dependable. Now, seems to me I've heard that line. Well, this time I need it. You just tell me what to do and I'll do it. All right. The first thing both of you can do is to get out of here and let me get my work done. 
Dr. Borden's going to be here any minute, and I've got an awful lot of typing to do. Never mind the details. We can take a hand. Wait, I've got an idea. Why not call the prison? Maybe the guard there knows who the men were that met your uncle. Why, that's a splendid idea. See, I'm beginning to be dependable already. Oh, I don't mind robbing the safe, but what have we got to take this zombie with us for? One reason is he's strong as a bull. Another is that Dacker can switch on that magic eye and watch him. Us, too, if we're close enough to him. I'm afraid we're going to double-cross him, is he? He's probably got that set focused on us right now. Thank you very much. The guard doesn't know who the men were. Well, there goes that idea. Well, we'd better get out of here and let Linda get her work done. Goodbye for now. Bye-bye. Everything's on schedule. There goes Brennan with the truck. Look, that's the guy we were chasing this morning. Sure looks like it. Those three men just alighted from it, sir. And Martin Warren isn't with them. Come on, I have an idea the Batman should look into this. And don't forget Robin. Alfred, drive into that alley and put the top up. Yes, sir.
Minister Jap Spy believes Linda knows the whereabouts of the powerful radium gun. And what about Linda? Can she escape his evil clutches? Don't fail to see The Bat Cave, Chapter 2 of Batman at this theater next week. Take down for a hundred. For two, Barney. Keep calling. Well, get me off the hook, Barney. Three hundred. Three fifty. Turn around. Twenty-five thousand. How'd you... How'd you know about it? Word gets around. Barney, what is all this? How'd you make it so fast? I shot him. I was bringing him in, he tried to break. Did you have to kill him? It was an accident, the shot went wild. 
Take it easy, Barney. I'll, I'll write out the report. Who was he? Kirk Martin, bookmaker. I'll call the coroner, Barney. Yeah, Cooper, you do that. Don't let it throw you, kid. He's a crumb. Court, maybe they got 30 days. Yeah. Too bad. Eddie, I know it's a story. I also know these guys. They clam. Once a cop pulls the trigger, it's one big secret society. Well, well I'll try to find a weak spot somehow. I... Bruce and Nolan are coming in now. Go pull your personal package from the file. story. What's done is done. I'm sure Perk Martin would agree with you. I'm asking you for extenuating circumstances, Mark. Last year, Nolan killed two hungry wetbacks in a market burglary. Three years ago, it was that tramp over on Sullivan Street. Look, what do you want us to do? Use butterfly nets? Nolan shot low. The bullet went wild and killed Martin. Write it that way. Nolan's a pistol expert. Okay, Mark. Okay, I know the rules. The story gets buried behind a girdle ad. Nolan's taught you well. The others will defend him, too, to me, but not to themselves. Cut it out. As long as I don't write it. Come in. Later, Detective. Brewster, I'll have your report. Here, give me that. Full name? William Taylor. Age? 23. Ever been arrested before? No. You say you saw him take the water cooler out of the bus depot. He was loading it on a kid's wagon. Why'd you take the water cooler? I was thirsty. All right, give him a drink and lock him up. All right, let's go. Who are you carrying this for, Kippy? Tony again? Matt Chisler. Jukebox Dan? <laughs> He's in the tank for a gang cutting. This could have been the night. I don't see him no more. Odell's dead. Just a minute. Your wife. Yeah. How about that boxer, Chico Moran? Find out, Fuzz. We will. Ethel? I'm busy, Ethel. Don't bother me. Snick knives are concealed weapons, kid. You want to put in another hitch in that nice state girls' school where burglars can't break in? You're a cop. You tell me. Oh, listen to me, Kippy. I've got a daughter about your age. Ah, oh, blow it out. Heads. Heads. Tails. Again. This is too expensive. Let's book him. Now, what's the charge? Gambling. What else? Come on, chum. Nolan. Now. When are you going to stop thinking with your trigger finger, Nolan? He tried to break, Captain. I heard. Cop. Most of this happened before I came here. Not my problem. What happened tonight is, either you're going to start using judgment, Nolan, or you can climb back into uniform and grow a new set of brains out in the daisy fields. Sorry I put you in a spot, Captain. There's no spot. You were a police officer acting in the line of duty. Nobody gouges us for that as long as I'm in this office. We gave you a gun, 
the authority to use it. One is no good without the other. They don't know that out there. So they'll scream blue murder until the next time they need a man with a badge. Get out. I'm busy. How'd he take it? True blue and sore as a boil. I'm fed to the gills. Try and forget it for a while, Barney. Yeah. Look, you've been trying to teach me to laugh off what we run into. Go live it up. Thanks a lot, Mark. I got a date with Patty. Have fun. Right. idea was this? I asked Dave. He needed someone. He said it might lead to me up there on the stage. What are you trying to do? Drive the customers away? Why, you haven't got enough legs around here, huh? Got to put her in a peep show. Peep Barney! Show? You asked me to give her a job. Not like this. Well, you know me, Barney. A, a dope. Get out. Go on, Patty. Get your clothes on. We're getting out of here. Go on. Who are they? Private detectives walking like men used to be around here a lot. Cops, huh? No, robbers. Hey, Brewster. Sergeant Brewster. My name is Mr. Michaels. I'm Mr. O'Neill, O&M Investigation Service. We're acting in the interest of a client. In connection with a bookmaker named Perk Martin. Now deceased. Who's your client? We're working for Packy Reed. I'll tell you, man, when Martin got killed tonight, he was carrying some of Packy Reed's property. What was it? Twenty-five grand. What? Twenty-five Twenty grand. grand. Reed has it wrong. Could be. Except Martin had the money on him just before he got chilled. Phoned Reed to tell him so. Martin had $312.75. I was there. Nolan was there first. Must be a mistake after all, man. If there was 25 G's on him, you couldn't have missed it, could you, Sergeant? You heard the report. Sure. What's to get excited? Your paper. You got to give him this? They're after a story. Cabot, we don't know what happened. Give me a day. You really love that guy, don't you? You were a kid on the streets when he got hold of you, and now neither one of you can let go. Go on, son. Tie yourself in knots. Take your day. Watch it to me.
What is it, Barney? What is it that makes you hate like that? How can I work for people? How can I keep friends when you slap them around? I love you, Patty. I wish that could make everything right. It will. Things are going to be different. You'll see in a minute. What? You'll see. Think I'm going to be a cop forever, like those other boneheads? Boneheads like Mark? I sort of like him, I noticed. He's nice. Mark's still learning his trade. I'm finished, graduating. Come on, I got something to show you. How do you like this house? Barney, did you? Not yet. It's not mine yet, but maybe, if you like it. Come on. Agent said he'd leave the key. It's a model home. All furnished, ready to go. something? Oh, Barney, it, it, it's just beautiful. Come on, come on. I'll show you the kitchen. Look at this. It's a beauty queen kitchen, the whole thing. Everything's automatic. Electric garbage disposal, dishwasher. Up here we have an electric stove. Three burners. A special cooker. Uh -huh. And there's a refrigerator and a deep freeze and even a rotisserie. Barney, it has everything. Sure, come on. I'll show you the rest of the place. Guess path down there. And this is the master bedroom. Hey! That's the worst of bad luck, hat on bed. <laughs> Come on. Well, how do you like it, honey? Oh, Barney, it's just a darling house. I love it. This would be living, huh? Look, honey, you make yourself comfortable. I want to check on something out back. Excuse me. right at home. Tight as a drum, nobody will talk. Eddie, I'm doing my best. Did it bother you, that rock stuff in there? The subject of their attention is one of the lowest of lice. Merely a peddler, a salesman, a businessman. This is only his 50th offense. Selling to school kids. Not nearly as bad as someone taking a bet on a horse. 
You're getting old, Cabot. I got old in this room, writing a worm's eye view of the human race. Then you ought to know when to lay off. I'm just a police reporter, Mark. Now, here it is, one, two, three. Now, these cops are often tempted to break a lot of rules. They got too much gas on their stomach and too little money in their pockets. And who's to say there won't be a big day when it's all going to be different? But right now, they do the best they can. Maybe it's not so pure, but they don't kill and beat up just for kicks. And they don't hide behind the tin wall of a police badge. Only a very few do. Is that all? That completes my seminar on your friend and teacher, Bonnie Nolan. your beef. Business, chum. I got no business with you. Not us. Packy Reed wants to talk a proposition. Get out of my way. Come on. You'll be doing yourself a favor if you drop around. Right away. It's all right, honey. I'll see you tomorrow. Read, a guy, a money man. It's nothing. Sleep tight, huh? Dream about our house. Cost you nothing. Talk cheap. Talk to Barney. No, you. We're detectives, just like your tough boyfriend. Unlock the door. You can't come in. Mark. What's this little act about? We're friends of her friend. Well, listen, friend. The next time you so much as talk to Miss Winters, I'll hammer that private badge into your navel. Just another misunderstanding. The time has come when we are no longer welcome. Please come in, Mark. I want to talk to you about Barney. I just left him. Come on, let's sit down. Mark, is Barney in some kind of trouble? I don't know. That's what I'm supposed to find out. Do you go home? I think he went to see someone. Oh, who? Someone named Packy Reed. Barney give you anything to keep for him? Like what? Oh, anything at all. No. He almost started a fight with those two characters out there. What did they want? Oh, they're sewer rats. Look, Barney killed a man tonight. It's a prisoner. It was an accident. That's what Barney said, and I believe him. But some people say the dead man was carrying a lot of money. The money hasn't turned up. And some people say that Barney's a murderer. You don't think so, do you? I told you to believe him, and I will until I learn differently. Patty, I, I've watched him change over the last few years. He's not the same man he was. He's like concrete. The older he gets, the harder he gets. How can we help him? I think he's lonely, Mark. More than anything else, he wants to be loved. To have someone care for him. Like tonight, he took me to see a house. A new little house. He was like a kid, Mark. A house? 
He's thinking of buying it? Maybe, but mainly he wants to have something of his own. Somebody like you. He wants me to marry him, Mark. Well, you're doing good if you love him. I know he's rough, strong, and impulsive. But when I'm with him, I don't have to think anymore. All I have to do is feel. I sound like a confession magazine, don't I? But I guess I'm lonely, too. Who isn't? Oh, Mark, we've got to help him. We will, Patty. All we can. Good night, Patty. Good night. Manny Marks, winner of his last 20 straight fights here. Mr. Reed, fight. no one's There's here. not too much time to go on this. Come though. in, Marty. Come in. Hiya, Packy. Sit down. Fight's on, sir. Honey. Manny Marks in white trunks from a stand-up stance, forcing the fights with left and right. But a good right hook counter punch there by Valdez. And there's the bell for the end of the ninth round. A word now from our sponsor. For the most reflect... Main event's late tonight. Good fight, though. Marks has got the edge. Look, Pac, I'm a working man. Get to the point, will you? I want to get home and get some sleep. All right, Barney. It's like this. I hired a couple of private detectives, Fat Michaels and Laddie O'Neill. I wanted them to get back some property for me. Somebody robbed you? Well, you might say so, Barney. But those boys, they're the violent type. All they know good is hurting people. Now, this is a job for a real cop. File a complaint, get a city man assigned. Uh, let me tell you. This uh, property of mine, $25,000 cash, was supposed to be brought here by Perk Martin. A hey, rest in peace. Ready for the start of round 10 of a fight scheduled for 12 rounds. Manny Marks there on the white trunks has had slightly the best... Kurt Martin it. usually carried a five grand round. roll to handle his bets. Tonight he was fat at 25,000... Valdez lends wow. a tremendous right. Manny Marks' knees are wobbly. He's trying to hold on here. 25,000. It's a nice pot of loot. Someone figured Kirk for an easy knockover. He was. I don't care about Kirk Martin. I don't even care who cooled him. But I do want my 25 grand back. Think you can find it for me, Barney? Don't be cute. You know I shot Martin. Man, the complexion of this fight has really changed here in the 10th round. There is Manny Marks just trying to hang on. A tremendous right punch in there by Valdez and down goes Manny Marks for one, two, three. He's trying to get up, but he slipped. I still ask, do you want the job? I don't know where your money is. You want it bad, huh? All that do? You're full of wind, Reed. Martin was carrying small change. You made a dumb murder, Barney. You got a rumble? Call the cops. All that city out there. And you know, Barney, a man wanted to hide out in all that city. He couldn't do it. You had your chance. Go on home, Barney. Get some sleep. Talked to Barney last night. I don't have to tell the paper, Mark. They already know. They're sitting on it. Who told him? Hecky Reed's putting it around. Barney's getting hot. His hair's on fire. Brewster, let me have your notes on that Perk Martin thing. Nolan, you had a phone call. Packy Reed. No case, huh? No, just checking a few angles for the captain on last night. He wants a full written report. By all means, let me help you. Speaking as one of the principals. 
All right, Buster, get it. Quit your shoving. I'm going. Dumb flat. I'll take it. Let me go. Quit. This beauty's all yours. Let me go, you tin god. All right, come on, sit down. Manager of the Save a Lot Market, 9th and Robbins. Caught him in the stock row. What's his name? George Washington. How'd you like about two years in the reform school, George? You coming on or off duty? Off. All right, go home and beat your wife. Yeah. Ever been picked up before? No. Hungry, huh? Yeah. When'd your father die? A year ago. Say, how did you know? We know everything down here. Your mother's gonna be upset when she hears about this. I'm Bonnie Nolan. You? Jay Phelps. Jay for what? Just Jay. All right, just Jay. You got caught. You know why? Because you don't know how to rob a store. See that detective over there? He tried it when he was your age. Got caught, brought in here. You know what I told him? Sure. Be good, say your prayers, and you'll go to heaven. Look, one more crack like that, and I'll slap your kisser off. You believe me? All right. Now, you know what I told him? What? Sir. I told him the next time he wants to rob a store to come here, talk to me. Cops know how it's done. I also told him if he got caught again, I'd personally see that he was locked up till he was old and gray. I'll make you the same bargain. Here. Take that. Pay for those things bring them home. I'll take them, Barney. All right. You owe me two years in reform school. You know Andy Tucker from the DA's office. Yeah, sure. Howdy, Hi, Barney. Hi. DA wants some more details on that Frank Martin business. I'll talk to you later, Andy. Right. I filed the facts. Well, you know how we lawyers are. Now, it says here in the report that you were in Crab Alley when Martin made his break. That's right. We took a shortcut. What's your trouble? Deaf and dumb, I guess. get before you dropped him? Uh, a couple of paces. Go on, go on. Do you have anything to add under remarks, Barney? Barney? Huh? I say, do you have anything to add under remarks? Oh, no. No, that's it. I'm working. Got a few more questions for you. Seeing me is work. I uh, checked all of Barney's moves last night. But you said you said you believed in him. It was an accident. I'm still on city payroll, remember? Sorry. I met Barney at the scene of the murder. Shooting. We went to headquarters together. He left there at 8:15. What time did he get to the club lockout? About 8.20. I had just changed into costume. Five minutes. That fits, I drove it. Then you left the club? About 10 minutes later. Where'd you go first? Straight to the model home. Then? Here. He left a couple of minutes before you came. Yeah, to see Packy Reed. He was there in 15 minutes, the time it takes in traffic. He was there at 17 minutes after 10. How do you know all that? Well, Reed said he arrived at the end of the ninth round of a big fight on TV last night. I checked the time of the round with the network. 
You detective. A good one taught me. It's Reed's money that's missing. Barney would never have taken it there. Look, Patty. If there's no connection between the missing money and Barney, he'll be cleared. I'll go out and get drunk with him. But if, on the other hand, saying he took the money, somewhere between the station and here last night, he hid it away. But you've cleared him. You said yourself you drove everywhere he did. Patty, don't you follow me? If he had the money, he must have hidden it sometime while I was with you. If he had it. Patty, I'm not doing this job for kicks. Look, he was in the back room at the club, then the model home, then he came right here. He, he left me at the door. Patty, what about when you were at this model home? What do you mean? He showed me through the place. He, he wants to buy it and carry me through the front door with a ring on my finger. Or is that breaking another law? Take it easy, Patty, will you? I know you're upset, so am I. All I want to know is... All you want to know is everything. Everything personal about a girl. Patty, in that house, did he leave you alone at any time? No, I was with him all the time. I told you he was like a kid running through the place. Okay. Till this thing is cleared up, don't rush into anything, will you? Is that a warning? Just a warning. So long, Patty. Keep this to yourself, huh?
Detective Bureau, please. Thank you. This is Miss Winters. Is Barney Nolan there? Barney went home sick. Sick? That's right, Miss Winters. Any message? No. No message. Club blackout. Is Miss Hi, Barney. No, she phoned she wouldn't be in tonight. Thank you. Again. Do you know what's wrong with mirrors and bars? Men always make hard eyes at themselves. Do you know that there's a people in the jungle that believe a mirror steals your spirit away? Maybe it'd do me some good. My mother always said I had too much spirit. Double bourbon three times. Did you know you could get goggles without a doctor's prescription that way? Skip the lip. I'm not interested. I'm busy. Girl business or business business? You know, you want to be tough, but you don't know how. Let me show you how to be tough. There. Now, take a puff. Shrug your shoulders. Narrow your eyes. Very good. Now you're tough. My name's Beth. Jack Roberts. Say, can you find us if we take a booth? I'll tie a string on you. Look, I'm comfortable here. Joe. Hi, Pat. What did I do wrong now? Next time you leave your keys in the car, I'm going to let somebody steal it. Oh, thanks, Pat. See you. Come on, let's take a booth, baby. Well, you should change your mind fast. That's me. Take me or leave me. Well, what do you know? Poor guy. He was deaf and mute. Played the accordion on the streets for pennies. He must have been lying here, hurt bad. Couldn't call for help. Yeah, I guess so. Wait here for the ambulance.
Cooper. Don't touch anything. What do you got? I got a murder. Thirty-five seconds, what can't you? I stopped for a round of golf. <laughs> <laughs> Let me leave you with this one happy thought, Jack. Someday we'll all be dead. All dead. From the feet up. Including cops. Why cops especially? Why? I don't know. I'm a cop. <laughs> Where's your uniform? Home in the basement, mothballs, detective now. All cops should be home in the basement in mothballs. <laughs> Did you ever kill anybody? Sure. Anybody you want knocked off? Not me. I love everybody. Besides, I'm hungry. Ah, it's about time they ate. One more drink, and they'd be climbing the walls. Are you ready for the spaghetti now? No, I'm not ready for a spaghetti. Send your telegram. Somebody else? Hello? Where, where? They told me at the precinct you were sick. No, I'm all right. Where you been all day? Trying to find you. Are you sure you're all right? Sure, sure. I'm so glad. Barney, last night those two men came back after you left. They what? They came back, grabbed me, tried to force their way into my apartment. They touched you? Lucky for me, Mark came just then. Mark? He was looking for you, Barney. Oh. All right, Patty, I'm all right. You forget about me. Go to bed, get some rest. I'll talk to you tomorrow. You're all right. Right, honey. Wrong on boys, huh? I keep reading. Jack, why don't you eat? Hi, Barney. I thought you said your name was Jack. Hi. Hi. You got a match? Sure.
don't you touch her again. Hi, Ma. Hi, Barney. I'm taking you in. You got a charge? Homicide, first degree. You murdered Perk Martin. So you joined the club at the precinct, huh? The Hate Nolan Club. I'm doing my job. Can't you spot a simple frame? Martin was one of Packy Reed's boys. Packy's out to scout me. Packy's got it in for me. Uh-uh, Barney. All right. Martin made a break. So I shot him. He was loaded and I made a touch. It's the first time, Mark. First time in 16 years that I ever took. Look, kid, we're pals. We don't make trouble for each other. I drew a deaf mute's case tonight. They thought he died in an accident falling downstairs. What do they think now? I haven't filed my report yet. You murdered Martin deliberately for the wad he was carrying. I don't think you can prove that. The deaf mute proved it. A dead witness is no good in court. How did you know he was a witness? You shot Martin in the back. Then you went through his pockets. Then you fired two shots in the air. Before the deaf mute died, he wrote those facts on a pad, what he saw. Listen, the guy was deaf, he was a dummy. Maybe he was blind, too. Yeah, maybe he was part of Packy Reed's frame, that fits. I came down here to get your reasons from you first. I got him. Let's go see Gunnerson. You really mean it, kid? About taking me in? Come on, Barney. Ma, give me a day, will you? Just one day, give me a break. Uh-uh. All right. Let's go. All right, come on. Stand up. Up against the wall, hands high, feet apart. You know the routine. You said the dummy wrote all that in a piece of paper. Which pocket is it in? It's at the precinct. Like you always said, evidence should be filed away safe. You got one big hole in your case, son. The dough. It's stowed. Well stowed. You'll never guess. And you'll never find it. Stop dressing. Barney. There's no time to lose, Patty. Stop dressing. 
All right, all right, Barney, but you scare me so. What's the matter? You heard me mention Packy Reed last night? Big wheel runs the rackets. Well, he's trying to frame me over an accidental shooting. So I'm going away till things simmer down. You're going with me. Why? It's too fast, Barney. I, I can't think this fast. You gotta trust me, Patty, please. Barney, stay here. Fight back. It's the only way. Don't understand, Patty. I'm being railroaded. Packy Reed and his gunners are out to get me. And all my buddies at the precinct are out to catch a goat for Packy Reed. So I'm in the middle. One or the other will nail me for sure. Barney, this is crazy. Clear your name. Why run away? For 16 years, I've been a cop, Patty. For 16 years, I've been living in dirt. And take it from me, some of it's bound to rub off on you. You get to hate people. Everyone you meet. I'm sick of them. The racket boys, the strong arms, the stoolies, the hooligans. I'm through with them all. Maybe this jam I'm going to turn out for the best after all, Patty. You and I will go away. Get a fresh start somewhere. I got the money. I had some saved. Please, Patty, hurry, will you? Barney. The money. Did it belong to Pack, you read? Mark said... Mark? What's he got to do with this? Barney. Why was he hanging around here last night? What did he tell you about me? He's trying to help Help me? Ten minutes ago, he tried to take me in. What's been going on between you two? Barney, wait, wait. He's turned you against me, hasn't he? Tell me, what did he say? Tell me, <laughs> tell me! In front of the liquor store, a 390 down. Sheriff's car, 76. At the Samson Grammar School. Juvenile Thought maybe you'd join the Navy. Got a murder for you, Captain. Fine. I got plenty of murders. All I'm interested in is murderers. Killer's name is Barney Nolan. Look, sonny boy, I've heard that Perk Morton story 18 times, and so has every other man in the precinct. A known underworld boss nails an accusation on a cop. What are we supposed to do, turn handsprings and lock him up? Nolan killed Morton in the line of duty, period. Unless there's evidence to the contrary, and there isn't. The guy that wrote that is dead. What he wrote is exactly how Barney Nolan killed Perk Morton. How'd you get that? Barney, I tried to bring him in. Alone? You still got lots to learn. Well, I've been lucky. Nine years of precinct, Captain. This is the first time I've been pulled into the train. Everybody in here. Everybody. Barney Nolan's gone sour. He deliberately shot Perk Morton. And when a witness showed up, a deaf mute, he put him out of the way. What about him? I want him to hear this. They call it servants of the people. Well, our bosses are entitled to know we've had a maniac wearing a city shield. When this story breaks, all of you are going to be the goats. 
Every police officer in the country will get dirty looks and dirty words. And the funny stories about policemen aren't going to be so funny. We gave Nolan the same edge we give each other. We believed him. If he gets away, he'll laugh at us. If we nail him, they'll hate us. Go out and rub your faces in the mud. Hunt him down before he kills again. You can phone in your story. I'll need a picture, Captain. Yeah. Run it on page one. All cars out of University Precinct. Call your station about a homicide suspect at large. This is Kowalski, University Precinct, car 10. The homicide suspect at large is Barney Nolan, detective lieutenant attached to University Precinct. He may be driving Precinct Detective Car 8. His description. 5 feet 11, 200 pounds, a male Caucasian, 36 years of age, wearing a brown suit, brown shoes, possibly tan top coat, brown hat. This man is armed and dangerous, probably psycho. Use caution. Captain Gunnerson, University Precinct. Right, this is Nolan's house. I was just checking the cellar, no sign of him. Well, we're on a stakeout. There's a code five in this area. Better get back to your beat, we'll take over. Right. Blockade's on all main roads. If he gets out of the city, he'll have to use a fix. Yeah? Look, this guy was our man, and I want us to get him before Central Headquarters takes over. That was Giano, stakeout of Patty Winter's house. She's disappeared. I was counting on her for bait. Said Nolan was overboard for her. She's his whole life. Yeah, probably gone to meet him wherever he is. I don't think so, Captain. Bet you a week's salary. Yours or mine? Mine against yours. Manning, he's the only one's got a key. Relax, man. Oh, 
That's quite a deal. A detective in a patrolman's uniform. Gets me around. You're nervous, Barney. It's been kind of quiet here. Doesn't your friend know how to talk? I'm paid to hide you, not entertain you. I got an examination tonight. Night school at my age isn't easy. That's tough. Business administration's a very difficult subject. Okay, businessman. Go administrate me a sandwich and leave us alone to talk. The price of a sandwich is $10. You said $500 a day covers everything. It'll still cost you $10. So it'll cost me! Go get it! You are a very hot commodity, my friend. I told you I can pay the price. I'm sure, Barney. Money buys a lot, huh? How bad do you want Argentina? Bad enough to deal with you. Ten grand. You're cracked. Ten grand. Plus expenses. All right. U.S. passport, charter plane to Cuba, airline tickets to Havana to Buenos Aires. Fifteen grand. The complete package. A deal. I said 15 grand. Let's have it. You think I'm crazy enough to bring it here? I think you better get it. Fast. I'll need a car to get the money. That can be arranged. There'll be a car outside at 6 o'clock. Get the money and I'll have a man to hand over the tickets. Where? Well, there's wrestling tonight. Gate B at the arena. Look, I got a uniform. I still got a face. I'll come back here. Once in, once out, that's all. Couldn't we find an alley somewhere? Perk Martin got killed in an alley, remember? Professor, how about this night school of yours? Possible. Union High School has many potentialities. For a meeting involving such high intrigue, may I suggest the men's locker room? Men's locker room, Union High School. That suit you? Best we can do, I guess. All right, then. Between 8 and 9 tonight. How I know your man? You won't. He'll know you. 8742. 8742. came late last night to see me. Wanted me to go away with him. Sudden, just like that. He was acting crazy. I wouldn't go. I, I went away to think. Mark, you told me he was in trouble, but I... I didn't know it was this bad. Mark, I... I came here to help you. Anyway, I can. I've been going over Barney's file. We've got stakeouts and all his known hangouts. Patty, if we find the money, we find Barney. Think now. The other night, when he picked you up at the club blackout, was he with you all the time until he took you home? All the time except maybe five minutes at the model home. Patty. Why didn't you tell me that yesterday when we were talking on the roof? I was all mixed up. I, I thought you were... 
you were being too nosy. That's where the money is. The model home, it couldn't be any other place. Where is this model home? Out toward Burnwood, I think. I... Hilly ground? Castle Heights. What was the house like? Nicely furnished. Modern. Was there a, a sign like, like who furnished it? I think it was from... Kling. Jim, Mark Brewster. Kling Furniture Company. Call the night number. Find out the street address of a new house they decorated out in the Castle Heights subdivision. Barnes. Yes, sir. This one is Officer Barnes. Watch out for her until I get back. Oh, and she's a guest, not a suspect. Yeah, Jim. Thanks a lot. I'll be back for you. Seven four two. That's right. I'm from Manning. When's the payoff? I'll check those first. Hold it, Nolan. Freeze. Check it, Pip. You read figured right. Okay, Nolan, you're gonna take us to the dope. What? Hey. Headed for Castle Heights Track Model Home. Address 466 South Camden Drive. I'm heading that way now. Brewster, Sergeant of Detectives. Clear. This is Captain Gunnison. Relay to all police cars, University Precinct in the vicinity of Castle Heights Subdivision. Operation Tin God. 
Suspect now wearing patrolman's uniform, driving 1953 brown Ford two-door sedan. May be headed for 466 South Camden Drive, Dragnet the area, code 21. Use caution. Let's go, code three for a while. got to do it. Don't know yet, unless that's where he stashed the dough. The night at the gymnasium, Nolan tried to make a fix. Ended up by knocking off Reed's goon. He still has Reed's money. The house? How do you suppose Brewster found out about it? The girl, who else? There goes a weak salary. What? Oh, never mind. <laughs>
this story good. When it's freshly bobbed, you gotta beat it to the box with the butter on the top. Get with it, man, start strolling down to the sweets that you're rolling, the best in town. Our candy's real gone, if I'm understood. To all you squares, that means the confection is positively delicious. Cork that stuff, give me five, let me send you into this nutty jive. <laughs> Shake it on down to this cool snack bar. Come on, Jill, give us a treat. A friendly pepper upper with a tasty beat. Drink Dr. Pepper, Dr. Dr. Pepper, cause it never let you down. Frosty, man, frosty. I got them riding on. Me. Got enough money to go to the circus, but not enough for the sideshow. <laughs> Save your money. Plenty of freaks around here. Hey, you think they got all the things they say they have? Sure, the man told us. Bet they ain't got no lions. They have to. The man let us see them. He did? Bet they ain't got no teeth. Sure they have, long as anything. Let you and me go see them. You can go ahead. We're going swimming. Hey, we're going past Doc Adrian's house, ain't we? Sure. We gone right by the front of the house? Sure. What's the matter, you scared? I ain't scared of no crazy doctor. 
Well, if you come coming, come on. Wait, wait, you see, it's this way. I have to get home for dinner. Why? Mom won't let me go to the circus. All right, so you're afraid. Well, you'd better stay here. I can't understand why they don't do something about Doc Adrian. Destroying all the values in this town, giving Red Creek a bad name. I think so, you're right, Mason. You ought to have been run out of this town a long time ago. Who ought to be run out of the town, Dr. Mason? Adrian. You should have been with us this afternoon. He scared the women so bad they haven't got over it yet. Yeah. <laughs> this town's too healthy. Maybe he'd scare himself a couple of patients. Understand them big doctors make a lot of money on nervous women. Well, it was a funny when that epidemic broke out, Quinn. You know as well as I do, he used a lot of those patients as guinea pigs. I know nothing of the sort. I know he did everything he could. There's two or three in this town who wouldn't agree to that. However, I can understand his reason for want of patience now. Well, he got himself another this afternoon. <laughs> Little Willie over there. He ran after me, hurt me, and I wasn't doing nothing. Poor child. I think you're all yellow. She's right, and then you've got the courage to do anything about it. His patients die on him, and now he's hanging around Miss Clifford's house experimenting with Francis, I guess. You make a poor critic, Mason. Your greed hasn't done this town any good. You doing preaching? Little preaching wouldn't do you no harm. What with the people you squeeze dry and the usury you charge on your loans? No, I don't ask him to borrow. I guess there's an answer for that also. But I think it'd be wasted on you. Business is business, Quinn, and you know it. Besides, uh... We weren't talking about me. Why don't we kick the doctor out and be done with it? I'm ready any time you're willing to start it. Oh, oh yes, that uh, prescription. I'll fill it in a second. Been quite busy this morning. I'm sorry to delay you, doctor. It's perfectly all right. I can fix it myself. It's, it's none of my business, and maybe we men of science think different from other people, but... Uh, if they ever find out in the village what you've been doing. You mean about the animals? Yes, some of the dogs have been missed. Well, that phase of the experiment is all over. I've yeah. found out all I need to know. Can I help you? Do you think they need you in the store? Just as you say, Doctor, just as you say. Enjoying the last of the sun, huh? Oh, a doctor! Sit down. Thank you. Ah. Oh, how's my girl today? Oh, you're all dressed up. Danny phoned. He's coming over. So early? We can't come tonight. He's going to the circus. Oh, yes. I almost forgot. I've got a present for you, Francis. Oh, for me, doctor? Well, now, don't get too excited. Just you oh. wait till you open it. Isn't there anything at all? A about? jewelry cake. Oh, Doctor. Oh, it's beautiful. 
But why so much, Doctor? You gave me a birthday present last month. So I did. Well, this is a make-believe birthday, just as you're my make-believe daughter. Was she very like me? She'd have been just 18 today. She was to have worn that. I couldn't save her, and I couldn't save our mother. I hadn't the weapons to fight the disease that killed them, but I have now, or at least I've got a knowledge of them. Ten years it's taken me. Francis, you are going to walk again. You're so intense, you frighten me sometimes. So Danny's going to the circus, huh? Yes. Then he's coming back here afterwards and tell me all about it. Oh, he is, is he? Well, why don't you go with him? Oh, me? Do oh, you think she could? Fooling. Why, of course she could. I don't know why she shouldn't. Hello, everybody. Uh, oh, Danny. Hello, Danny. Hello, Danny. Hello, Mrs. Clifford. Well, Danny, how would you like to take Frances to the circus? Well, gee, that'd be great, only... Well, of course she can go. We can take care of her. I'll be back for you later. Oh, thanks, Doctor. Now, don't you worry, Mrs. Clifford. Two strong men to look after her. She'll be all right. <laughs> be back later. Danny, I think you'd better run home and get yourself cleaned up. You look as if you'd brought all of the grease from the garage with you. <laughs> you know, Francis, I think the doc's crazy. I suppose I'll have to like him as long as he's nice to you. He wants to be nice to everybody, but people won't let him. Well, I'm not saying I believe all the things. That... Don't you believe any of the things they say about him, Danny Foster? Well, all right, don't get excited. Look, Danny, the stories they tell about the doctor are just as dirty as the grease on your hands and face. Well, that about takes care of me. So long, honey. Goodbye, Danny. This time next year, it'll take three men to lift you. Oh, not three men, Doctor. If it did, they'd want to kick me in the circus. Hop in, Doc. Oh, no, you can get somebody else at the circus to help you lift her down. What's the matter? Aren't you coming? No, you two go on by yourself. Oh. Now, you don't mind if I change my mind, do you? Oh, please, Doctor. You'll have much more fun together. Off you go. And don't forget to tell me all about it in the morning. So long, we Doc. We won't. Thanks for everything. Goodbye, Doctor. Bye. Goodbye, Mother. Bye. Have a good time. Bye. Goodbye, Goodbye Doctor. Goodbye, Goodbye Mother. Goodbye. Oh, come, come, come now. This is no time for tears. I know it. I can't help it. Ah, nonsense. The change will do it a world of good. Good night. Good night. Show. He's a big fella. Is he bigger than three men? That ape? That ape is bigger than six men. Six big men. It's the biggest ape gorilla in the whole world. Look, here come the clowns. Oh. Having a good time? Oh, yes. You don't act like it. Gee, everybody's looking at us. I'm nervous. What for? Well, out with a married man and, you know. Gee, this, this is the best circus I ever saw. It's the only circus I've ever seen. Excuse me, sonny. 
peanuts, five cents a bag. Isn't she lovely? She's so graceful. Ah, she's not so hot. I saw her pass in the garage this morning. Them costumes make a big difference. That's what the doctor calls muscular grace. Muscular coordination. Uh, honey, look over that ring there. See? There you are. You're all right now. You'll be chasing bones in the morning. What I've done for you, I could do for men. They let me. That's all, honey. I'm sorry it's over. We'll never miss another circus. to do, drive that animal crazy? Well, he's getting mean. It's the only way I can handle him. Did you ever try a little kindness? Nothing wrong with him? Nabu. Come here, Nabu, old boy. Come on, Nabu. That's it. Yeah, well, two years That's ago, he killed my old man. And I ain't gonna let him forget it, understand? I know he did. I was right here when he did it. Because he was abusing him, same as you're doing. If you don't watch your step, he'll get you, too. Why don't you mind your own business? <laughs> you boys wouldn't be gambling, would you? Oh, no. <laughs> Sheriff, take me in. <laughs> <laughs> that was a fine show you fellas put on. You was the funniest clown I ever seen. Oh, I rode a horse. He was the clown. He was? Yeah. yeah. Oh, he looks like a judge. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, Pete, let's give him a hand. Come on. Get something to put him on. We'll take him there. Right. Get him on, man. Somebody better get after that ape or he'll tear this town wide open. Pete, get a posse together. Come on, boys. Let's see what we can do about that fire.
man badly hurt. Sorry to bother you, Doctor. Bring him in here. Come on, right here, Lily. Well, what happened? An ape got him. An ape? Hope we scared him off in time. This man's bad anymore. Well, you better get him into my laboratory. Jane, you show them. Well, how did it happen? Was he in the cage with the ape? No, the circus burned down and the ape escaped. The circus burned down? And the audience? They'd all gone home. Oh, thank heaven for that. Uh, will you want us any further, Doctor? No, I'll take care of it. Well, then, come on, boys. Let's get out and see if we can find that ape. Don't let him get at me, mister. Don't let him get at me. Perfectly safe here. Yeah. I'm a doctor. Am I hurt bad, Doc? I'm afraid, sir. I don't feel it. Am I going to die? We all have to die sometime. Oh, just don't let me die, Doc. Man. The highest kind of animal. history. I'm going to keep a promise. Wait here. Keep your eyes open. That sheriff ain't got no heart. I'm so hungry I could eat hay. Well, there's a barn full. Help yourself. You take your fellows and search the country up around Carter's farm. Jim, you take your boys and cover the west side of town. Pete, you stay with me. Uh, how about joining us, Mason? Let the circus people do their own work. Why should we do it for them? The circus is burned down. They've had trouble enough. Oh, that's their tough luck. Well, if we don't find that ape, our own people might get hurt. That's your job. Your law and order. And why should I worry about other people? They don't worry about me. You wouldn't be a little bit scared, would you, Mason? Well, don't be all day about it. We're ready. He gives a body the creeps to think of that critter roaming around. Better keep the doors and windows all barred. No telling who we'll go for next. Are you all right, dear? Mm-hmm. Want some more? What you thinking about? I was thinking about that wonderful woman aerialist I saw last night. Oh, here comes Dr. Adrian. Morning, Mrs. Griffith. Good morning. Francis. Oh, good morning, Dr. Adrian. I want to thank you again for the wonderful time I had last night. Uh -huh. It was too bad about that trainer, wasn't it? Now, don't you think about him. This is the most important day in your life. Today, we are really going to start her cure. I found the serum that I need. I'm going to walk, Dr. Adrian. I hope so. I'm not just thinking about you, Francis, but of all the other sufferers in the world, all the little boys and girls who can't go out into the sunshine and play and have fun, who have to spend their lives in a wheelchair like you. I'll do anything I can, Dr. Adrian. I know you will, my dear. It's not going to be easy. It's going to hurt. But when it hurts, don't be afraid. Just remember that when the pain is gone, it'll leave It'll leave new life behind. Huh? I think we'd better get her ready. All right, Doctor. Uh, 
Now we've got them here and there and here. Now if we don't get any results tonight, we'll start in here and work west. Oh, change your mind, Mr. Mason? I never change my mind. You gotta have one first. That's enough out of you. Here's that dispossessed notice on Wilcox. I want it served tonight. We're busy tonight. It'll wait till tomorrow. Your duty is to take care of the citizens of this town. Not fooling around chasing apes. It seems you're in a mighty big hurry to make people uncomfortable, Mason. It's my business what I do. Fine, and it's mine what I do. We'll get to this when we have time. No. Good night. Doctor. Well, Francis? Oh, my legs. What? They feel like lead. I can't lift them. But you never could lift them before. Oh, I know, but I never felt them before. You... you feel them, Francis? You feel them? They're so heavy. Well, that's good news, my dear. That's what we were hoping for. But it's only just the beginning. If there's any change, you send for me immediately. Yes, Doctor. Mother. Jane. 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 Look, I've succeeded. It's there. Life, life in that tiny bottle. It's working. A child will walk again. Just go. Jane, we are safe. 
But only you and I must know that he's dead. Good night. My legs hurt quite a little, Danny. I know now Dr. Adrian is really going to cure me. Well, if they hurt you, how can you be getting better? Oh, you don't understand, Danny. They never hurt before. There was no feeling at all. Now they feel alive. Just the same, I don't like it. I don't like things I can't understand. Well, I don't understand either, Danny, but I believe in him. Oh, I have so much faith in him, Danny. He says I'm like a daughter to him, and, well, I know he wouldn't hurt me unless he had to. It's, it's part of the cure. It's just got to be. All right. I'll try to believe, too, honey. But I'd rather carry around all my life and have anything happen to you. Sheriff, any luck? Not yet, but we'll get him. Well, I hope so. Come on, boy. Come on. There, it looks like they picked up a scent. Come on, Sheriff. Come on, Sheriff. All right, get him. Come on, Sheriff. Well, what got into him? Hold on. Hold no. on to a minute, will you? Yeah, you betcha. Hello, Doc. I haven't seen anything of that ape, have you? Oh, no, I haven't, Sheriff. Well, my dogs just acted as if they'd picked up his scent. Oh. Well, I better be careful. Huh? Yeah, you better be. Having trouble with insects, Doc? Yes. Uh, this is just a little mixture of my own I'm trying to get rid of them with. Well, if it works, let me know. My yard's full of them. Certainly will. Thanks. Stew and dumplings. I don't care for lamb stew and dumplings, thank you. Besides, the sheriff wants us out early to capture that ape. You needn't lie. I know where you're going. Oh, you do? Yes, everybody does. So you've been listening to gossip, eh? I can't keep people from talking to me and telling me you found a new interest. Suppose I have. Well, there's nothing I can do about it, I guess. Well, keep that in mind. But if you just wouldn't carry on here where we live, so people would stop pitying me. Even if you'd go somewhere else. Why don't you try going somewhere else? But I have no one but you. I have no folks. I've got no place to go. You've got the river. Mason, I feel sorry for his widow. Oh, she's better off. Ah, oh, that ain't funny when a man's been caught to death. I didn't like him when he was alive, and I don't see any reason to like him when he's dead. Just the same, it ain't right, even if he was no good. We gotta give that ape credit. He only picks out the ornery cusses. <laughs> what makes you think you're safe? <laughs> <laughs> well, boys, you got yourself some rest today? About 40 wings, we're plum tuckered out. Well, maybe we can get some more people in to help us out. Why don't we go out in the daylight? Because he don't come out in the daytime. The circus people told us we'd never get him then. We got to catch him prowling after dark. Think he's still hanging around the village? He got Mason, didn't he? And we found new tracks up around Dr. Adrian's house. Oh, give me a sarsaparilla. Quiet, you. Uh, 
What do you think of that, Sheriff? Even the dogs don't like him. Well, what got into him anyway? Acting the same way around his house. Don't make sense. Maybe it's because the doc looks so much like an ape yourself. <laughs> <laughs> this is no time for joking. All of you be on the job tonight. I'm scared, Mrs. Clifford. She looks almost... I'm really scared. We must trust Dr. Adrian. But we don't know. He ain't got a patient in this town. People don't just hate a fellow for nothing. Do you hate him, Danny? No. It's not hating him. It's... It's loving Francis the way I do. If anything happens to her... I'm going down to see him. I gotta ask him. I gotta know. Danny? Danny's worried, isn't he, Mother? Now you just rest, dear. Danny will be all right. Oh, if my legs didn't hurt so. But I'm not afraid. You aren't, are you, Mother? No, darling. I want my little girl to walk again. You ain't going in there, Doc. Now, what is this, Danny? I'm scared about her. I gotta know what you're doing. Well, surely you want her to live a normal life like other people. Well, sure, as long as nothing happens to her. I love her just the way she is, Doc. I can take care of her. I want to take care of her. I don't want no experimenting on her. But, Danny, if through her I could rid the world of... I'm not in love with the world. I'm in love with her. I get it. She's just a guinea pig to you. Well, you gotta stop it. You gotta stop hurting her. Have you been to your garage today? No, I ain't. I've been too worried. Well, you take care of your cars, and I'll take care of my patients. Now, just you run along. I ain't running no place. I ain't no doctor. And I don't know enough about what you're doing. But if anything happens to Francis... Nothing's going to happen to Francis. Now, don't interfere. Here comes Danny with the doctor. How do you do, Dr. Adrian? Well, how is my patient feeling this morning? I'm all right. She's been in great pain, doctor. In pain? Oh, that's good. Good? Of course it is. That's what we're looking for. Now, you prepare her. Work. You say the name is Mason? Yeah. Yes, Doctor. Initial H. Anything in your examination to go into my report? No, I believe not. Well, I just said the death was caused by a fractured vertebrae. I guess that about covers it, doesn't it? Yes, I, I should say that it would. The reason I sent for you, Doctor, is because you examined the circus trainer when he was sent north. And this case being a similar one to that, I thought probably in your examination that you had discovered something that I had overlooked to put in my coroner's report. I see. Uh, this Dr. Adrian, whose name uh, is on the death certificate, is he the local physician? <laughs> yes, if you can call him one. Folks around here don't like him much, though. And he was also called in on the case of the trainer? Yes. Yes, that's the same fellow. He came here during the paralysis epidemic. But the folks around here say that he experiments too much. Thank you very much, coroner. I believe you've given me all the information necessary. That's fine, Doctor. Oh. Oh. Francis, what do you feel? Oh, my legs. They're hurting? Oh, they hurt terribly. Have you more sensation than you had yesterday? Oh, yes, much more. Do you think perhaps you could walk? Oh, no. Then try to move your foot. Oh, I can. You can. Try. No. You can. No. You can. No. You can. Oh. Oh, my. Mother. Oh. It's working. Oh. 
Now you rest. You rest. I'll be back later. Mother. I, I know I'll be able to walk again. I know, baby. I know. Dr. Adrian? That's right. I'm Dr. McNulty from the Robinson Foundation. Oh, yes. I had occasion to examine the body of a circus trainer who was killed by an ape here in this town. Yes, sir. I understand that you uh, administered to the wounded man before he died. I did my best for him, but it, it was quite hopeless. In spite of the spinal injection you gave him? I gave him no injection. I just came from viewing the body of this man, Mason, and I noticed a similar spinal puncture. Did you examine him also? Well, they called me in, of course, but it was too late. He was dead. And you noticed no such puncture? Well, the body was so badly mangled that... Uh... Well, no, I didn't. I see. I understand they've had an epidemic of paralysis here. That's true. Many years ago, the Robinson Foundation found it necessary to expel from the institution a most promising young research worker because of his daring, unorthodox experiments with spinal fluid. It was 25 years ago, to be exact. Then you are that Dr. Bernard Adrian, whose definite theories... And in spite of what you did to me for 25 years, I've been engaged in proving those theories. By what method have you been doing this? I'm not in a position to disclose that at the moment. I see. Well, I'm afraid you leave me no alternative but to report... Wait. If I could give you some small measure of proof, would you change your mind? I doubt it. Let me show you. I'll show you. You see? Now, these two creatures were completely paralyzed. But after my treatment, well, you can see for yourself, they're as lively and healthy as ever they were. All this has nothing to do with the case. But it has. The serum that I used... What became of the serum you took from those two men? You come with me. Doctor. Oh, this is Clifford. Now, this is Dr. McNulty. How do you do, Doctor? He'd you like to talk to Francis. She's asleep. No, I'm not asleep, Mother. Hello, Francis. Hello. Now, this child has had a complete paralysis of her lower limbs for ten years. Is that right, Mrs. Clifford? Yes, it is, Doctor. Have you had any feeling at all in your limbs since uh, Dr. Adrian has been treating you? Yes, they've been terribly heavy, and I've had a great deal of pain. Pain? Yes, and just a little while ago, I moved my foot. Is that right? That's right. Will you do it again for me? I can't. Make an effort. I can't. Thank you. That's all. I think you'd better take her out into the sunshine. Is anything wrong, Doctor? Why, no, Francis, dear. Of course not. foot did not move, but I did feel a definite muscular reflex. Congratulations. May I notify the Foundation that, that you'll come back to us? It's too late. I have to stay here. At least give me your promise to keep us informed of your progress. 
every step of the way. Thank you. to just some place where they shouldn't be. That ain't nothing new. Have you looked down in Jones's barn? I caught them smoking there last week. Hmm. We've searched the whole town. Go take a look for them, Pete. They ain't far away. Sheriff! 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 Where have you been? Just a minute, Walker. We got him. We got him. What, 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 what is it? Mickey killed him. He shot him dead. Bang, bang, between the eyes. Hold it, kids. What'd you shoot him with, Mickey? My 22. I got a good beat on him. Where's your 22, Mickey? He dropped it, Sheriff. I did not. The ape grabbed it. I'll ape you when I get you home. Ah, oh, gee, Ma, don't you believe us? Where'd you see him? On the pike about a quarter mile from Doc Adrian's house. All right, get him home. Come on, Mickey. Come on, Willie. Right. 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 Come, right. Come on, Willie. Come on, Come on, Come on, get out. They probably shot a cow. Yeah. <laughs> I look into it. <laughs> Where are the dogs? Red's got them over on the other side of town. All right, let's go. <laughs> Wait a minute, boys. I want a word with the doctor. I'll be right out. Okay. All right. Well, Is the doctor in? I wanted to see if you were all right. Ain't been out, have you? No. I'm trying to think out, Doctor, a lot of things. That ape seems to take offense to your place. Now, don't take offense, Doctor. I'm just trying to clear up my mind. Them dogs of mine have been sniffing ape for days. It's made them foolish, I guess. Else why'd they snarl at you? Well, there may be some chemical odors on my clothes that offended them. Uh-huh. But I ain't never seen my dogs offended at anything. Can't understand it, Doctor. Yeah. Wait a minute. Jane! Just get me that torn coat of the trainers, will you? Now, this is an idea that's just occurred to me. I don't know whether it makes sense or not, but perhaps it'll explain your problem. Uh, you see, this coat was worn by the trainer when he was mauled by the ape, and it's been in the house ever since. Now, that perhaps explains the interest of the ape in this house and your dogs in me. Then then I'll bet you're right. Well, I'll get along. Think I'll put a few men around your house the rest of the night, Doctor, just so you'll be protected. Oh, don't bother. 
father I'm perfectly safe, and they might interfere with some work that I have to do. Well, maybe I'll just keep an eye out myself. I'm just a bit scared, Doc, but don't tell anybody about it. <laughs> This is the coat that trainer was wearing when the ape killed him. Boy, Just look he at that. that he got he sure turned up in a struggle. One sweat. Well, come on now, boys. When this isn't getting us anywhere. If we lay down on this job, our own coats will be in the same shape. Come on, let's get busy. Now, you All fellas right, get back to your positions. Uh, you boys go up this way. All right, Sheriff. I'll stay here. Francis, dear, I want you to forget all the hours you've spent in this chair. Put them out of your mind. You're not paralyzed, you never were. Fasten that firmly in your mind. You're not paralyzed. You'll do that for me? I'll try. Don't forget. You are not paralyzed. Now then, move your right leg. Move it. You can. Oh, I can't. Try, try. Stop you it, you're hurting I can't, Quiet. Dr. Adrian. Try it, Francis. You can. You know you can. Move. There. You moved it, didn't you? You moved it. Now the left one. Now the left one. Now move it. Try. Try again. There. You moved them. You moved them both, didn't you, dear? All right, then. Stand up and take a step towards me. Do it. Do it. It's only your mind holding you in that chair, not your body. Do it, I say, do it! Uh, you see, I told you. Go get her some water. Oh, she's all right, Danny. She's better than she was, isn't she? She needs more. She needs more. Take care of her, Danny. I'll be back. Francis, darling. Francis. Name's Halliday, sheriff over to Red Creek. Got a job finding you. Well, circus jobs are pretty hard to get, sheriff. No, all jobs are kind of scarce. You boys get that ape yet? That's what I come about. Didn't get him, huh? It's bad. He's a killer. You boys got some responsibility tracking him down, haven't you? Well, we did the best we could, Sheriff. The fire broke up the circus. Some of the boys stayed there, didn't they? Yeah, but that's not what I come about. I just figured when you're looking for something, it might help to know its habits. Too many things about this animal I don't understand. Well, animals is all alike. Lions, elephants, dogs, they all got one track minds. What do these gorillas uh, live on? He ain't killed any animal. Shucks, no, they won't touch an animal except out of meanness. They live on fruits, vegetables. Well, that's what's bothering me. What's feeding this fellow? Maybe digging up a garden, patch of two, or stealing a little bit of fruits. No signs of it. Checked with all the farmers. Do they prowl around much, or do they stick to one place? Well, a gorilla generally sticks to one place if he's got anything there to keep him. We see evidence that this fellow's hanging around one place. Hey, that ape had it in for the trainer. Where'd he die? In the house of a doctor near the outskirts of town, and that's the place we think the ape's been hanging around. Say, how would he uh, trace the trainer to that house? Well, sense of smell. We're pretty good at that. Did you bury him in town? No, he sent his body to his people up north. That don't give us much, does it? Any of his clothes around? When that trainer was taken away, his coat was left in the doctor's house. Would that draw the ape there? It certainly would. You better get rid of them. I was afraid my time might be wasted coming over here, but I guess it ain't. Thanks very much, Mr. Howley. 
I better be getting on the road. I'd like to make home around nightfall. If there's anything I can do for you, let me know. <laughs> Two boys go over there by that shop. Danny, take your men down there a hundred yards by that rail fence. Okay. Oh, Sheriff, we've been watching there every night, and so far nothing's happened. Now I'm. Will you tight. take orders? All right. All right. You two boys go over by Wilcox's barn. Yeah, you mean Wilcox's barn? Yes, Wilcox's barn. All right. You two boys go down the road a hundred yards. You two wait for me over by that stone fence. All right, Sheriff. Is the doctor here? You sure of that? He's not in there. Sheriff, what's the idea of sticking around so close to the doc's house? Because that attendant told me that ape would haunt any place where that trainer had been. Oh. Hey, what's getting into that sheriff? He, he's getting touchy. Lost his sense of humor. <laughs> you know, when a man can't laugh, it's just too... This where we found the body? Mm-hmm. Uh, do apes ever return to the scene of the crime? They're noted for it. Well, we've got something to look forward to. What's the matter? Did you fire that shot? Yes. It's Tom. The ape twisted his neck, but Archie knifed him. Can you walk? Pick him up and carry oh, him to I'm the dock. All right. Go on and get him. God, he can't be far away. Come on, get out. Get, get out, out from you fellas. You boys come with me.
Francis. No, no, Francis. I'll see what's happened. Francis! Let me give him one, sir. Hold on, that's enough. He's done. What are they doing? What are they saying? Darling, I don't know. It's the dark. All right, boy. Take that off of him. Let me through. Did the ape hurt him? Let me through! Let me through! Dr. Adrian! Come to me, child. Walk. He's dead, boy. You must know, but do it. I'm doing better every day, Danny. Oh, sure. You're doing swell, but you got to take it easy. I'll get your chair. No, Danny. Mother and I burned the chair yesterday. I'm never going to use it again. You bet you won't. 